Hello, we have a lot of exciting updates this month, so let's start. And first really important update is ability to do SQL scripting in Databricks. So as you see now, we can now create compound SQL statement with begin and end command. And inside of it, we can put for loops, case statements, iterate, a lot of things related to error handling, uh, iterate, also we can leave, like exit uh, the compound, uh, compound statement. And this uh, all, all new uh, SQL features are now as beta in public preview. So soon you will have ability to test it. And it's really important update because it will make migration from legacy systems much more easier. Another update is tabs, which you see here, and everyone can switch on now tabs. They are universal for SQL editor now and notebooks. If you want to switch them on, and I guess probably you want to do that, you need to go to uh, your user settings and go to developer. And then you need to scroll down and there is option tabs for notebook and files. And after that, you will have new tabs experience. And uh, these tabs are really amazing and they are working really fast. I, in fact, we can call them soft tabs. Another updates are related to AI. There are a lot of new features uh, coming re related to agent framework. So now you can create agents in Databricks and it's in general availability. And there are a lot of new features and I will just uh, point a few of them, my favorite one. So one of my favorite one is that you can uh, debug deb execution of, uh, of uh, function from agent. So usually it takes a bit long time because agent need to execute SQL code, but with that debugger, it's much more easier to check uh, how much every step takes and also uh, to debug errors. So it's really nice improvement. Another update is related that, uh, to the fact that agents can now call external systems through HTTP. Uh, so to establish this connection first uh, for agent, uh, first we need to uh, define that connection and register it in Unity catalog. Uh, why this definition of HTTP address is important? Uh, generally, usually when, uh, when you have production environment or access to production data, you don't want to whitelist every URL. And this uh, governance to govern that uh, endpoint through Unity Catalog is really good because then, for example, administrator know uh, what uh, what could be whitelisted, and also it will be included in lineage. Uh, so uh, recently there was new function introduced, which is uh, select HTTP request, which is sending request to external system and getting uh, getting the response. Uh, we can see that we successfully triggered uh, the post request and we got uh, status code 200. And then the select uh, HTTP request function, we can register inside our custom function. And that custom function, then we can add uh, to, uh, to LLM model uh, as a function uh, which, uh, which will trigger external address. So let's see how it's working. So first of all, that connection was registered and we can see uh, now in connection, as I mentioned, so we can see here is our new connection alert. That connection is to request bin. And then if we go to, for example, to playground, when we want to create own model, then we can add that, uh, that function. This is the function which we just created, rise alert. We can add that function and we can try to use this. So we can say to LLM, Rise alert that server is burning. And let's see what is 
what is happening. So first LLM is checking uh, available function and found that there is function raise alert, even we haven't specified this in prompt. And then this uh, agent is invoking that function with alert text, service is bur burning, and then the agent got response 200. So it really works amazing and we can do a lot of custom uh, implementation using that possibility. And then when we implement that agent's uh, function, then we can export that LLM and create own, uh, own model. So that, that was that update. And another update is related to, to Jenny. So another update around AI. So in Jenny, we have possibility to upload files now, but first take a look on to preview that file. So uh, in volumes, uh, we can now preview the files. Uh, so for example, if we click image, we got this image. If we click JSON, we, we can see the JSON and it's really nice visualized here. And we can also preview CSV. And that CSV actually we have also on my drive. And now it's possible to upload files directly to conversation with Genie. Uh, why this is important? Because there are a lot of use cases that analysts, for example, talk with uh, Genie with, uh, back, uh, with uh, data model, which Genie is consuming. And for example, say, show me products data set. And then Genie display that uh, product data set. But for example, we, have some, we do some notes, some manipulation, and then we want to, to join that, uh, that produ product table with, for example, our, our file where we put some additional information. Actually, here I put the number of items which we have. So we can just drag and drop and upload file now to Genie. So let's wait a few seconds for upload. Uh, it's thinking and ask, uh, ask Gini, please join uh, product DAX CSV with my products table. And then if everything goes smoothly, uh, it will uh, combine both tables. And so le let's see. Yes, and it managed to join our uh, manual, manually made uh, CSV with that product, ta product table, and we can see number of items here. So it's really nice feature, especially for data uh, analytics. Another update is related also to AI, and now we can use REST API to communicate with Genie Workspace. And it is a really nice option because we can really easily create custom applications using out-of-the-box Genie. So there are a lot of comments available, I think more, more to come. So we can, for example, get, get Genie Room, so that Genie Room is XShop, which I've just created. Then we can start conversation. We are sending here message, hi, X shop. Then we can create new message. So here is a message, how many eggs do I have? Uh, or we can get message. And there are another uh, comments available to get, for example, generated SQL by Jenny. But here we ask that question, uh, how many eggs do I have? And what I really like in that behavior, when we go through UI, uh, now, and we will go to our uh, chat, we can see that conversation which we did uh, through API here uh, visualized as UI. So it's a really nice, uh, really nice integration. That's all my update related to AI. Now let's talk about Lakeflow. Uh, when you go to, to jobs, to data engineering part, and you click create, uh, you can see that there is uh, that uh, DLT pipelines, which are now called ETL pipeline uh, jobs were combined together, but now you have third option ingestion pipeline. And this is that entry point for uh, Databricks connectors, which are natively built in, in Databricks. 
Uh, we can see now one in UI, but actually there are now three of them. Just uh, one is uh, visible in UI, Salesforce, but there is also Workday and ServiceNow. So it's a really popular application used in big enterprises. Uh, if you are not familiar, some big companies uh, really often use that, uh, that too. And you can consume now that data through built it. Uh, uh, pipeline, which is uh, handling slowly changing dimension and doing uh, that things incrementally. And uh, also, if you go to create connection here, you you can say you can see you can see that, for example, workday reports uh, has been added here. Next update is related to streaming. There are a lot of improvements uh, to streaming, and one of them is possibility of consuming views as a stream. So here is example, we create table, uh, then we create the view based on that table. Uh, let's insert few records to our uh, table. And then uh, we can consume uh, that view, which we, which we are pointing here, demo, demo view, uh, as, a, as a stream. So uh, basically that view is acting as a filter in streaming. Uh, so uh, it's a really nice uh, solution for, for some architecture. And we can wait here a bit and uh, see the, the result of that stream. And we can see that it correctly read uh, data from our view because we can see here the streaming records. And another update is relating to, related to administration. Uh, if we go to account console in uh, setting, we can see token report. So uh, it's place to ma manage all tokens uh, generated in Databricks. And it's uh, really useful to do some governance and monitoring uh, how tokens are used and by who. Uh, so it's, uh, it's really nice. And I think that page will be quite popular among uh, account administra administrators. Uh, another update is related to binding. Uh, what is binding? Binding is that we, it was popular for uh, catalogs that we select to which workspaces the catalog can be bind, so be visible. And now that binding was extended, that if we go to external locations, for example, credential, we can select uh, in in which uh, in which uh, workspaces that uh, that uh, external location can uh, can be assigned to. Because before, for example, when, when you are administrator, you saw in every workspace all uh, external locations mapping or all credentials mappings. And now you can uh, click here, assign to workspaces and uh, administer this, that. And it makes sense because usually you register, for example, external location for catalog only for uh, some of workspaces, for example, for development one, a test one or production. So it's a really, uh, really nice uh, solution. And uh, of course, you, you can do that through UI, but uh, also I, I check that it's possible to do that bindings through uh, CLI comments and uh, we, can, we can test it. So when you open a ter a terminal, let's test that, uh, that external location, which we just saw. It was called files. And we can uh, see the binding, which is there to that workspace. So it's really good uh, to administer. Of course, you can also administer it through Terraform or Databricks SDK. Another important update is related to describe extended, because now you can uh, use describe uh, ex extended as JSON. Uh, it's really useful because that JSON has stable schema, which you see now. And the normal describe extended for program programmatical usage uh, can be changed uh, because there is no stable schema. And if you are using 
uh, describe for any programmatical use cases, you need to use this as JSON because there is a long schema and is documented and it will be stable. Uh, so here is a few examples uh, how you can use that uh, describe as JSON. So usually use it in fact in Python to parse somehow that data. Also it's JSON, but I check that it can be easy is a easy change to variant type. So here is as a string, but here you can see as variant type, or you can do some uh, some manipulation with that. Yes, to select just part of that JSON or uh, some other operation, uh, like for example, to check your schema for something. I saw a lot of usage of describe, but before we use that normal describe from a data frame and here is this as json and last update which is really important uh, is automatic liquid clustering what is that before we use liquid clustering which is better than partition in most cases uh, and we had to specify columns yes uh, still for use cases when you really know which columns are will be used it's really good but sometimes especially when we have tables used by analytics in uh, in databricks when people write in on sql warehouse uh, queries uh, non-stop we cannot predict uh, what will be used so that's why that option is really good because it will read query history read and write patterns and decide how to uh, how to split our database and optimize based on that query pattern uh, but of course if you using cluster by auto you need to remember that they, there have to be process which will do that liquid partitioning which is optimized and in fact that process have to be run by predictive optimization because it's uh, collecting statistics about your queries and updating that data constantly so uh, reach out to your administrator to enable predictive optimization if if it's not yet enabled and then you can uh, use uh, that cluster by auto for that use cases and that's all update for that this month uh, thank you for watching and see you in my next video